So I like Oversimplified, and apparently you guys really do too. According to YouTube, it's the number one other channel you guys watch besides mine. And Oversimplified is always dominating the other videos that you guys watch, at least as of the last seven days. Even this three-year-old video, like that's crazy. Now it sounds like you guys have already watched this video. I haven't seen it yet. If you haven't seen the original, definitely go check it out. I'll leave a link down below. I'm really excited because this is like the number one thing I wanted him to cover next. Us short kings gotta stick together. Okay, Mrs. Bonaparte, this is it. One last push, and we're done. <laughs> Congratulations. Wow. It's a general. Oh. It's that easy. And here comes the rest of the army now. Uh, did you just say the rest of the army? Uh, someone needs to check out what this lady was doing, because apparently it was a whole lot. A cannon? A horse? I gotta admit, I am very intrigued. Full of great conquerors, many with very impressive origin stories. I don't great know conquerors where Napoleon don't came from. Come from. That is where our story begins. Corsica. Oh man, I can't wait for the prison break part. Until one day, Corsica said. That's probably in part two, though. Hey, France, you want to buy this island? And France said, sure thing. And, and they kept it Corsica forever. France, just in time for Napoleon to be born French. They Many bought Corsica? Corsica? Didn't I didn't know that. Them. And from an early age, Napoleon developed some fairly anti-French sentiments. Napoleon's dad, however, uh, quickly embraced awkward. his new French overlords, which created some tension between dad and son. Ooh, look at me. I'm dad. I wear powdered wigs and silver buckled shoes, and I'm a traitor to the Corsican people. Go to your room, Napoleon. No, you so, go to your room, dad. Because Napoleon was Italian, right? Okay. Napoleon adored his mother, who was definitely the disciplinarian of the family. And even though she would punish Napoleon severely, he kind of He looks like he's that. enjoying that. Why is the images now in my head that Napoleon likes to be dominated? Like some weird BDSM. Okay, Napoleon. Why don't you introduce yourself to your school. new classmates? What is that all about? Well, you can't pronounce the letter R. All you do is go on strike, and you call eggs oofs like a bunch of big I want to go to military school. Dingleberries. Actually. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Napoleon. I hope you like being bullied. And bullied, he was. They picked on him for his Corsican accent, his family's lack of wealth, and it probably didn't help that he also had oh, a bit of a chip on his shoulder. Oh, we're finally going to talk about the height thing. Own. I want to know what his take is on it. I know I said short king in the very beginning, but it's debatable. And when he graduated at the age of 16, Nothing he different was made here. second lieutenant in an artillery regiment. Now, second lieutenant might sound pretty sweet to a screw-up like you, but Napoleon had a little something called Accurate. ambition. Stonks of it. And he Very curious what Napoleon participated in officer. before he, he did what he did. To what rise wars? The ranks. Wouldn't it be nice if, say, a revolution came along and changed all of that? Well, what are the chances? The French Revolution is here. Yay! Tomlin, head chopping. King Yay! Puppet, I just like the head chopping part. Napoleon may not have cared much for the violent mobs, but if it meant he could rise the ranks, he was in. He began fighting to defend the revolution. Oh, so this is the only thing he really participated in before battle-wise? Why did I think they might have sent him to the U.S. And, uh, US and as his military prowess became more recognized, for he was even given his very own army. Napoleon's wildest dreams were coming Ooh. true. But Napoleon also believed he could increase his social status if he married an older rich lady. And so around this time, Napoleon went on the prowl. Never a bad idea. However, he was a verified creep. He reportedly had terrible luck with women. And most wanted nothing to do with him. Fortunately, he wow. eventually met Joseph's so single mother who was many things in common with this guy. It's crazy. Stability. So she agreed to marry him despite finding him intensely disgusting. Napoleon, you dirty dog, you've done it. Nice. Unbeknownst to Napoleon, however, Josephine had a bit of a promiscuous reputation. Uh -oh. Hey, Napoleon, I uh, hear you're marrying Josephine. Boy, she sure is a great kisser. That's right. Hey, wait, <laughs> what do you mean she's a great kisser? Hey, Hugo. Now, hang on just a minute. Hey, everyone. Napoleon's marrying Josephine. It's oh, a very nice. good family-friendly way to put it. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure I kissed real kisser. Gotta keep that monetization. Is there anyone here who hasn't kissed my wife? Yeah. You. <laughs> As Napoleon fell madly in love with his new wife, she fell madly in love with a man named Hebo- Fuck! Because while France was having its revolution, tensions in Europe were rising. Hey, Austria, we totally just socked it to our monarchy. What? Dude, the rest of us are monarchies. You've just totally threatened the balance of power in Europe. Now we have to worry about our stinky peasants rising it's up It's coalition against us. time. I mean, and the rest of Europe is probably itching to give you a wedgie. But you're not ready for a war yet. So you gotta be cool, man. It's absolutely crucial. Gotta be chill. Say something to defuse the situation right now. Preposterous. Where are the baguette jokes at? I declare war. Oh. Sacre bleu! 
Europe? So France ended up. They have the German the problem. Of Europe. The no-no the German problem. The Can't began. stop declaring war. At first, France struggled, but then they started to do surprisingly well. And I can't believe we're already talking about this six minutes into the video. I guess this Europe. isn't a video in specifically about Napoleon. How many coalitions do we have to talk about? Like seven. North to kick ass, and Napoleon in the south as a bit of a diversion. For the first time, Napoleon would lead a military campaign. This so was he wasn't the leader himself. by the first coalition. The army he was given were demoralized, lacking equipment, and underpaid. But Napoleon galvanized Twinkies them with inspirational again. speeches, and he took them into Italy. He was outnumbered, and his campaign was partially meant to be a sideshow, but he made it the main show. While the two northern armies were being held back, Napoleon made staggering progress. In Ooh. a signature Napoleon move, he masterfully split his enemies into two and took them on separately, knocking Sardinia out of the war and putting the Austrians on the run. At the Dang. famous Battle of Lourdes, Are we going to get into how friend. he was so he good? Because I don't even know. What made him so mud? good? Pretty great at this military stuff. Just be careful your head doesn't get too big. What oh. did you just say to me, <laughs> little prick? And as Napoleon swept through northern Italy, the Italians cheered his arrival. Yes. I'm here to liberate you from your cruel Austrian oppressors. Mm. So the people liked him? Others outside of France? And replaced them with French ones. Oh. oh. Guess not. Pope had been supporting the Austrians, so Napoleon briefly went to go give him a slap. And as he began to go. approach Vienna, the exhausted Austrians were forced to make peace, with Napoleon overseeing negotiations himself. He had <laughs> just single-handedly knocked Austria out of the war. And by the way, he was only 28. So maybe it's about time you moved out of your dad's attic. Wow. I feel like such a piece of crap right now. Thanks for that. Just Not making stupid videos in my room alone does. at the same age. He, got, he was hailed as a hero, and the extremely unpopular government were concerned he might get some power-hungry ideas. So they agreed he should go far away from France to Egypt, where he could maybe undermine British access to India. Napoleon was eager to win more glory, mm. so he brought with him a team of scollars. Oh, yeah. Like, Whoa, it's a freaky man cat. Yeah, Whoa, that's right. I remember stick. this. Whoa. It's an ugly horse. Whoa, it's a stumpy little manlet. Hey, I read a meme about this I'm once. I'm actually average height for the time. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, see, that's my British thing. Admiral I'm Nelson average height for 1796. One thing you should know about Napoleon was that he was a skilled propagandist. He published mm. his own newspapers that sometimes exaggerated his achievements and even commissioned paintings that generally made him look cool. So when he returned to Paris, he was yet again hailed as a hero. And he began to go. get some power-hungry ideas. First, however, he had a bit of a problem to deal with. See, he had learned something shocking about his dear <gasps> wife. Really, Josephine? Uh -oh. This guy? I'm just as tall as him. He looks like I'm a Chad. Sorry, I swear. He looks like now sexy Squidward. Famous, I'll never do it again. Make sure you don't. I've never stooped so low as to cheat on you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be in this room consulting my generals for the next 30 minutes. And by consulting, I mean boinking. By my generals, I mean oh. this woman. I was and gonna by 30 wait. minutes... I mean two seconds. <laughs> there was a lot of things I could say about that, but uh, I was wondering he what he was doing exactly with those generals. Coup, Napoleon's brother Lucian, president of the lower house, isn't there were still a, a member of Napoleon's family living today? A descendant? What if we're going to talk about that? He worked to consolidate even more power. Look at that big, thick French borders. Belgium way, is gone. So maybe it's about time you washed your disgusting bedsheet. I don't use bedsheets. I just sleep on the mattress. Back when Napoleon was still in Egypt, being Indiana Jones. Back home, France was in France, being France. They had conquered even more territory, and they were like, Hey, Piedmont, you get revolutionary ideals. Hey, Switzerland, mm -hmm. you get revolutionary ideals. And Rome, Everyone. you get revolutionary ideals. Everybody gets revolutionary ideals. Oh, hey, guys. Nice sledgehammer. Tell that one was coming. And Naples, very cool nail gun. You guys here to get some revolutionary ideals? <laughs> Hey, didn't the U.S. start that, though? Didn't we uh, influence France, France though, partially the during the now independence? Second coalition. Time, Is this where they walk through Spain Russia and just say, hey, we're just walking by, guys, but in reality, they weren't bang. walking by? They did. Now, there are many traits that made Napoleon a great military leader. There we go. I already mentioned one of them, how he was one of the boys and commanded the total loyalty of his men. But now we okay. see a second reason, the element of Ooh. surprise. In 1800, Napoleon Seems simple moved enough. to Geneva. Seems like, like he was probably going to good take tactics. On the There's no way he'd be crazy enough to move his entire army south through the Alps as a surprise attack on the Austrians besieging Genoa. Oh, Napoleon's moving his entire army south through the Alps as a surprise attack on the Austrians besieging Genoa. Napoleon's crossing of the Alps is legendary, and you may have seen one of the most Sounds famous like paintings Carthage. of the general popping a sick wheelie on his majestic oh, stallion, is that when surrounded that by dangerous was mountain to terrain. Be. Of course, in real life, he made the crossing on a depressed mule, but that's not as cool. When Don't worry about that. It sounds cooler. Come break their siege. 
but Napoleon went for their supply line near Milan, forcing the Austrians to meet Napoleon head-on at the famous Battle of Marengo. The Austrians initially clobbered the outnumbered French, and they were like, hooray, we won. But then a few hours later, Napoleon showed up again with an even bigger army, and he clobbered them Ooh. right back. Holy cow, this tiny little fun-sized French guy is running rings around us. Hey! I'm average height for the time, you <laughs> jerk! Then, after General Moreau's victory at Hohenlinden, Vienna was exposed, and the Austrians again sued for peace. Crazy like how war, that propaganda, that British propaganda is still relevant today. French, but in that, many ways, that works. They both, only the UK remained at war with Napoleon, and they were using yeah, the power to blockade French ports oh, and were blockading. even seizing the cargoes of neutral ships. Obviously, everyone else got pretty pissed off that the British were interfering with their trade. So in response, they formed a league, and they embargoed the UK right back. Oh. Neutral countries protecting their own interests? That's offensive. So Britain went to Copenhagen and blew a bunch of stuff up, and the league disbanded. But because the UK's economy was pretty bust, they decided to sign a treaty with France in 1802. For oh. the first time in a long time, Europe was at peace. He had just taken charge of a nation that appeared to be losing a war and turned it all around, securing French gains in Europe. But there was now a big question. That's you a see, lot of clients. Throughout states. the chaotic French Revolution, French Yay! governments had struggled to keep the economy afloat. They often didn't have a whole lot of support. Seems like a fun way to go. I'm still thinking went. death Would by Napoleon guillotine sounds finally fun. The economy's crumbling? Well, then why don't you have yourself a new national bank, currency reform, and improved taxation and welfare systems? The legal system is an incoherent mess? Well, then why don't we nicely wrap all those civil laws up into one new centralized legal code? Corrupt government officials? Throw them in the trash. Bad infrastructure? Throw it in the trash. Wasn't Women's Napoleon rights? both good Throw and bad Wait, at, at certain... Really? We'll see. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, while Napoleon was building on the equality of the revolution, he also largely scaled mm. back rights for certain groups. Yeah. And husbands like kind of great full legal control over their wives. But come on, ladies. Maybe let men have a slice of the pie for once. Okay. Random Thor in there. The revolution had led to a lot of chaos, and Napoleon needed stability. So he rolled back a couple things. Most notably, with religion. The revolution had pretty much kicked the Catholic Church to the curb. Whoa. But Napoleon understood that since many French citizens still considered themselves Catholic, that could be a problem. So he came to an agreement with the Pope and brought back the church, only this time but with some pretty hefty I thought they didn't like each other. He also ensured freedom for other religions and is often noted for his positive treatment of Well, Jewish they have to like each other now when you're right there next to the French clients. While all of this may make Napoleon sound like a pretty stand-up dude, it's good to note that he believed in religious freedom because he thought it was a powerful tool to keep the poor from eating the rich. Or something like that. Overall, Napoleon's aim was to end the chaos of the revolution and finally create a stable and prospering French Republic. And in that aim, he seemed to be largely successful and generally popular with the people of France. He officially declared that the revolution is over, adding, I am the revolution. Napoleon's head could be seen mm -hmm. for miles. Of course, not everyone was happy with Napoleon's reforms. Conservatives felt he was too radical. Radicals felt he was too conservative. But since Napoleon was a dictator, yeah, can you just could stab him? That's what I was thinking. Good old fashioned iron fisting. In 1804, Napoleon took one fisting. last major step. After some failed attempts were made to assassinate him, he wanted to strengthen his position and ensure his dynasty could live on after him. And so he decided being first consul for life simply wasn't quite enough. He decided he should become emperor. He held a vote, yeah. asking the French people if they were cool with the idea, and they returned a definitely not rigged 99.9% .9 in favor. The balls cool. on this man. And so on the 2nd of December, 1804, in an elaborate ceremony at I Notre love Dame, democracy. Napoleon was made emperor. The Pope was even invited to attend, and normally he would crown an emperor. But to make sure everyone knew this wasn't some Charlemagne-style circular power division, Napoleon lifted the crown and placed it on his own head. Like I said, the balls on this man. He was now emperor of the French. I mean, well, Napoleon, he had to have you balls general, of steel. Then he became for first what he was doing. For life, and now you're an emperor. Is it enough yet? Is your ambition finally satisfied? Hmm. I don't know, Pierre. What comes after emperor? I would say God, sire. You want to be a god? <laughs> yes. I'll put it I down forgot that one of the okay, best everyone. parts about watching what this is the like hell is going on. The this Easter eggs in the background. Showed up out of nowhere, and he's kicking our ass. So he's good exporting at that. the ideas of the French Revolution wherever he goes, and he just declared himself king of Italy and emperor. He can't do that. I'm the emperor. Oh, hey, fellow monarchs. I see you're having a monarch party. My invite must have got lost in the mail. I'll just set up a spot right here. Wow, you don't belong here, Napoleon. We're coming to take you down. 
I'd like to see you try. Oh, I'm so scared I just pooed my pants. Hey, everyone, I just pooed my pants. <laughs> Poop. No, but I did go <laughs> for my pants. Before Napoleon had even declared himself emperor, the British had already redeclared war on France because both sides had been violating their previous treaty. Napoleon immediately occupied Hanover and then began making plans for a great British invasion, partially paid for by selling a Ooh. huge chunk of land to the United States. Oh. Napoleon gathered his army along the English Channel. Reverse D-Day? was the problem. While Napoleon's powerful army would almost certainly obliterate the British on land, there was very little chance he'd actually make it across the channel because Britannia ruled the waves. This power dynamic would keep the two traditional Isn't that enemies the story from a deep all of Britain history the Napoleonic wars. However, the British had something else up always their sleeve. that strong navy copious amounts of money. They were willing to throw cash at anyone who would go to war against Napoleon, and there were plenty of takers. Austria, Russia, Naples, and Sweden, hoping to put Napoleon's France back in its place, formed the third coalition against France. The coalition so Spain forces probably was their allies this time in the beginning. They stood a chance. They and weren't prepared for the changes. total humiliation they were about to suffer. The war of the third coalition was Napoleon at his best. We've already learned two ways in which Napoleon was a great military commander, but here comes one of the biggest reasons, speed. He had reorganized his army into corps, which were themselves basically Sounds like armies. some blitzkrieg had their tactics. Own infantry, cavalry, and artillery, and as a result, was able to act more independently. They spread out through the countryside, and by living off the land, rather than relying on heavy supply trains, they were able to move extremely quickly. Napoleon would traverse massive distances, outmaneuver his enemies, isolate them, and then move in for the kill before they even knew what was going on. Lightning warfare leading to total destruction. Would you like to see him do it? Here we go. All right, that's Part of the coalition's pretty good tactics plan was right for there. the Russians to meet up with the Austrians and take on Napoleon together. Combined, they could turn the tide against him, so Napoleon needed to stop them from ever meeting. But he's all the way over in Boulogne. No problem. In a matter of weeks, Napoleon marched 200,000 men in secret, encircling Austrian general in Max secret? and capturing his entire army. A devastating battle blow. of Ulm. Napoleon later remarked, I have destroyed the Austrian army by simply marching. Next, he turned to face the approaching Russians. Okay, it looks like the French are coming for us, but check this out. I've got an amazing idea. When they approach, we run away. Sir? That sounds good. You're a genius. The Russians began to retreat with Hey, Napoleon that's what Russia and since his eventually ended up doing, but then they learned to also burn their problem, towns down at the same time, right? The the scorch on, earth. The more likely it looked other countries may join the They could have done that here, but against him. they couldn't but scorch Napoleon Austria. The they weren't from Austria. Alexander the first was young and seeking glory. So he came up with an idea to lure him in. So part he one is going to be the rise of Napoleon. Part two is going to be the fall. Um, it says, hello, I'm just a widow baby boy. And I'm very scared. Are you? You talking like that, or is he? He is, sir. Why is he doing that? I don't know, but it's very cute, helpless, and vulnerable. It hmm. is. A little baby boy, eh? Very scared, eh? Cute, eh? Boris, get my crossbow. We're going hunting. The Allied forces turned to face Napoleon, who they now believed was in a vulnerable position. He was set up at Austerlitz, and to make it look like he I was love these, like, he had even breakdowns of the, the battle. A thick fog set in, obscuring Napoleon's center as the Allies took the bait and set up on the heights. From there, they spotted Napoleon's very weak-looking right flank, and they descended the heights to go get it. Little did they know, it was exactly what Napoleon was hoping they'd do. The next thing they knew, a large French force was emerging from the fog, launching a huge central assault up the hill. They swung wow. around, crushing the Allies, and as men it's attempted like to flee across French the frozen zombies lakes, Napoleon rising. ordered his artillery to fire on the ice, causing an unknown number to drown. But he told me he was just a little baby boy. What Whoa. happened? He tricked you, sir. You mean, I was the little baby boy all along. <laughs> it was Napoleon's masterpiece, and Austria were once again forced to Did people not have a swim back then? France. Then, with the French conquest of Naples in 1806, especially if you were from a the landlocked the country, I feel like as yet another not. Napoleon victory. This was the third time Napoleon had had to give Austrian Emperor Francis a good spanking, um, and so, with the peace treaty in 1805, okay. Napoleon was determined to punish him. He was forced to give up territory, hand over significant compensation, and promised never to fight Napoleon again. For Is that now, Russia, Sweden, and the UK remained at war with France, but none were able to offer much of a threat. And so, Napoleon got to work strengthening his grip over Europe. 
he gave out rule of captured territories to his family and friends, and most notably, he established a new confederation in Germany, with himself as its protector. Confederation Seeing of the Rhine? influence in Germany being wiped away, Emperor oh, Francis there it acknowledged is. reality and officially dissolved the it's Holy over Roman Empire, an the chaos of Germany. For over a thousand years. But it wasn't all good news for Napoleon. He was for just trying thing, to fix Border Gore. Earlier allied with That's sympathetic. Four, because the British just couldn't help themselves from blowing up Spanish ships. And Napoleon hoped a combined French-Spanish fleet would eventually be able to invade England. Unfortunately, he received word that British Admiral Nelson had engaged his fleet at Trafalgar. Normally, naval battles looked like this. But in this case, Nelson did this. Was it because he was an idiot? No. It's because he was a genius. He successfully punched through the Franco-Spanish line and unleashed hell. His victory ensured British control of the sea, and mm. his death during the battle made him a legend. Napoleon's hopes for a future British invasion were gone, hoping to secure peace on the continent. But that wasn't looking likely, because the Prussian king was under pressure from his wife. Frederick, he's established a confederation in our turf, and he told us he'd give us Hanover, but then offered it to the British. You have to declare war on him. What is it with you and war? What is it with you and being a cupcake? Go to war! Okay. In October 1806, Damn, drop Russia, the cupcake word. You gotta listen at that point. Joined the coalition and declared war, beginning the war of the Fourth Coalition. Just Unfortunately, keep going. Prussian King Frederick William III wasn't the smartest tool in the shed. Look at him over there, being all French. Makes me sick. Boys, we'll get him this time. But here's the thing. This time, we have to stick together. Do not under any circumstances face Napoleon by yourself. Mm -hmm. You all saw what happened to Austria. Uh, hey, where'd Fred go? Hey, you jerk. Think I hate when that happens. Shot? Huh? Want to tangle with Fred? Gaming with your boys. Someone screwed. just goes, Leroy Jenkins. Allies, ruins the Russia whole had group. And sent Napoleon an ultimatum, demanding he move all his forces out of Germany. Now, some of you watching this video probably can't even wipe your own bum bum yet. But even you know, you don't just send Napoleon an ultimatum. Obviously, uh, Napoleon these passive aggressive the comments, comments was quite outdated. So when they met Napoleon at the twin battles, I don't know how I feel about these. Auerstedt, it wasn't even close. Even Marshal Davout's heavily just because they're true doesn't Auerstedt mean you got to say it. Running, and Napoleon carried out a ruthless pursuit of his fleeing enemy, taking Berlin and within a single month decimating the Prussian forces. Frederick William and the remnants of his army moved to the east. At this point, Napoleon's forces were pretty tired. Winter had come, and conditions were miserable. Uh -oh. He anticipated both sides would settle into winter quarters, but Russia decided to try their hand at an unexpected winter attack. A series of brutal battles followed. Russia in the winter. Toll on both sides, including They're getting the an environmental Bela bonus. In blizzard conditions, men froze to death and many deserted. The Russian artillery tore the French to shreds, and Napoleon himself was momentarily under risk of being captured. In the end, the French army was saved thanks to a legendary cavalry charge by Napoleon's flamboyant cavalry commander, Murat. After the horror inflicted on both sides, they decided it might be a good idea not to do any more fighting until after winter. Then, after hmm. winter came, and the fighting continued. The Russians were pushed back to Friedland, where Russian general How long did they wait? Made a bit of a it doesn't seem like you could just wait till after the winter. River to his back. It seems like the that French took like three months. Were able just to chilling. Pull the Russians between the river and their concentrated gunfire, a major element in Napoleon's fighting style, and many Russians drowned as they tried to escape. War of the Fourth Coalition. Victory, Napoleon. Some of these seem debatable. Let me know if you want to see a part two by leaving a like or subscribing. I'll do another video like this. And again, if you're not subscribed already, definitely go check out Oversimplified and Sub. And thank you to the patrons of June. Drew's Argentinian Grandpa. I'm about a nut. Aryan After Hours. Sussy Imposter Does a Little troll. Zephy. Poppy Drew Woo. Stormtrooper 501. Patrick C. Many Many 74. Luxembourg Lover. Aaron F. Aaron F. Anthony G. Call of Tortoise. Dalton D. Elijah Senpai. Epi Nick. Full Kaylee K. And M203 Brusham. Thank you.